Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 20161. This build includes a number of notable changes and enhancements over the last public preview builds of Windows 10, of which there have been many because it's been a very long time since Microsoft added any notable changes to Windows 10, at least changes on the surface level. Um, so yes, we're back doing build videos. Hopefully this is a trend that can continue. Uh, it can only continue if Microsoft continues to add new changes on the surface of Windows 10, um, which they have done in this build. So uh, let's dive straight in. The first notable change in build 2161 is that the start menu has received a little bit of a facelift. You may notice that the live tiles on the right there, Microsoft has streamlined them all to be the same color. Now these tiles are also slightly translucent. So if you look very closely, you may be able to notice that your wallpaper sort of shines through these live tiles ever so slightly. In fact, if I open up an app, a dark app, maybe that will show it off a little bit better. The app is sort of appearing through the start menu here and indeed the live tiles more importantly. That's kind of the, the big change there for live tiles. But the color of the live tiles here isn't always white. If you're using Windows in dark mode, for example, um, if we enable this here, go into settings, colors, change to dark, then the start menu live tiles will also change to a dark theme. Otherwise, it would look weird otherwise. Um, and that's what it looks like in dark mode. I actually think it looks a lot nicer in dark mode, so we'll keep it as is there. And you'll notice that the squares are no longer here around the icons in the apps list as well. So the, essentially, the, the plated squares around app icons are going away. And as a result, the tiles on the start menu are now translucent. They're no longer based on an accent color, although you can bring that back if you scroll down here and enable color on start taskbar and action center. If we open up the start menu again, you'll see that the tiles uh, the the color of the tiles sort of returns a little bit based on your accent color, um, but they are still translucent. If you look very closely there, you'll see that some of the colors in the app settings app behind are poking through, uh, which looks pretty nice. Uh, let's turn that off. So those are the biggest changes to the start menu. There's also a new apps. There's also a new folder icon for folders in the apps list here. You'll see it there, and I think that looks quite nice as well. Now, not all apps will listen to this translucent you know, new live tile interface. Uh, for example, if we pin Spotify once again, um, you'll see that it's still using its own sort of live tile design. Same for things like sticky notes. Although it, I promise that's using its own. If we turn to light mode, that will remain dark. Um, let's see, Skype, I believe, is still using its own. Yep, and uh, a couple others. Uh, weather is as well, but weather kind of makes sense. I've actually turned the live tile off. If we turn live tile back on here, that will begin showing you know the the um the usual live tile interface for weather um is that something we can change on the windows 10 mobile version you could change that but i guess you can't here on uh, the desktop mode uh, but yeah, so th those are the sort of tile interfaces. Um, this will improve over time. Right now, it's sort of kind of early. You see some of these apps don't even have colorful icons, the old Microsoft Edge, um, which, by the way, the only reason we have the old Microsoft Edge here is because uh, this build doesn't have the new Microsoft Edge pre-installed and Windows Update isn't pulling it either. And I'm not going to manually install it on these builds. I'm just going to wait for either Windows Update to grab it or the builds to have them built in automatically. Um, but there you have it. That's a quick look at the start menu, at least. Another notable change in this build is that notifications now have a little X instead of the arrow for um, dismissing the notification. The behavior is still the same, but they've changed the, the icon. So if I pop this toast notification here, also the layout slightly different. Text is a little bit of a different size and some elements have slightly moved, but overall it's still the same. But uh, here's the X I was mentioning. And as you can see, it says move notification to the action center. So even though it's an X, it does the same thing. It doesn't actually dismiss the notification. It just moves it into the action center, which um, which is fine, I guess. Now, another notable change in this build is with um, the taskbar. Microsoft is testing this right now, so I don't know if this will ever ship. But depending on whether your Microsoft account has an Android phone linked to it or has an Xbox account linked to it, um, Microsoft is testing different ways of setting up the taskbar by default. So, for example, in the example they used, if you have a... Um, an Android phone paired with your phone and you sign into a Microsoft account when setting up a new PC, it will automatically pin your phone to the taskbar. So when you get to the desktop for the first time, the Your Phone app will already be down here and ready to go. Same for Xbox. If you're installing Windows 10 on a gaming PC, I don't know what they determine to be a gaming PC, 
but also have a Xbox account hooked up to your Microsoft account. When you hit the desktop, you will have the Xbox icon down here instead. Now, I actually don't have the Xbox app installed, I don't believe. I have the Xbox console companion, but that's not the same thing. Um, the actual Xbox app, which is in beta right now, that's coming at some point later in the year, I guess. Um, that app will be pinned automatically to the taskbar. By default, it's mail, which you saw at the beginning, and I'll put that back there. By default, it's the mail app, but it can also be your phone or something else now. Now, again, these are just examples Microsoft has provided. Um, this could be any number of things. If you have an active Office subscription, it might pin the Office app, for example. Uh, but that's just something they're toying with in the taskbar. Now, moving right along, another change in this build is that the, the notification that pops up when you enable or, or when you flip a device around into tablet mode uh, will no longer show up asking if you want to enable tablet mode in Windows 10. It will now just assume by default that you want to remain in desktop mode and just have the improved desktop mode touch experience, which um, sort of spaces out the taskbar icons, as you can see there. It adds the on-screen keyboard button to the system tray. And if you open things like File Explorer, it makes all the buttons in File Explorer much bigger. Um, the old tablet mode is still enableable. If we go into system here and go down to tablet, see by default, it's now set to don't switch to tablet mode. But we can re-enable the ask option or the very or we can even set it to always switch. So if I do it again, you'll see that tablet mode actually gets enabled this time. And uh, those are what the tiles look like in tablet mode in case you were wondering. There's another change in settings, which I actually haven't got enabled here. And um, it's silly that this is an A-B test, but it is. But there will soon be an option to copy uh, the, the details here in device specifications and Windows specifications. It's not there now, but again, that is a feature that they're testing and will be coming soon. And that will just copy all of this information to your clipboard and allow you to paste it in, say, Notepad or somewhere else. Now, that's basically it for this build video. Um, before we sign off, I do want to quickly talk about the Insider program as a whole and how it's changed quite considerably since we last did a build video. So if we jump into settings, for example, you'll notice that in the Insider program area, the rings are gone. And this is part of a sort of rebrand for the Insider program, which also reflects changes to how Windows is developed and flighted to Insiders. So if we go to this area here, you'll see there's now a dev channel, beta channel, and release preview channel. Dev channel replaces the fast ring, beta channel replaces the slow ring, and release preview is still release preview. So the reason they've changed this is because the dev channel, which was once the fast channel, has changed purpose. It's no longer previewing the next version of Windows 10. The dev channel is an active development branch that will receive new changes and features all of the time, many of which are not destined to be in the next version of Windows 10. For example, these new start menu changes you're seeing today may not show up until the release after the next version of Windows 10, or two releases after the next version of Windows 10. They're no longer anchored to the next version of Windows 10. And that just gives Microsoft more room to breathe when it comes to developing new features, and especially testing experimental features such as Windows sets, um, which isn't in here, and there's no plans to bring that back that's just an example features like that microsoft can put experimental features into windows without any expectation of them ever shipping and that's what the dev channel is really for it's for testing features that may not be ready for a long time maybe they will be ready for maybe this maybe this start menu stuff will show up in the next version of windows 10 um, but it's just no longer destined to be that way and that's the change with the dev channel the beta channel is um once microsoft does have a a collection of features that it's ready to ship in the next version of Windows, that's what the beta channel is for. So when Microsoft is ready, it will select a bunch of features it has in the dev channel, not all of them, might I add, um, fork them off into the beta channel and begin flighting beta channel builds, which will then be determined as the next version of Windows 10. And then the release preview channel is sort of more of the same. It tests the, the upcoming shipping version of Windows 10. Um, so yeah, so like I said, features that are in the dev channel aren't always guaranteed to be in the next version of Windows 10. They more they more often likely will, but that isn't guaranteed anymore. Features that show up here may not be in a shipping version of Windows 10 for one, two, three years, maybe even longer than that. Uh, but that's the changes to the Insider program, and I figured I would mention that because it's quite an important change to the Insider program. But yes, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.